Yo! Hey. What's up? Welcome to church today. Yo, yo, yo. We got so much in store for you. We really do. And you know what we're going to start off with? We're going to start off with our core values. values. So, do you remember our values? I remember some things. Okay, he remembers some things. We're going to start off with value number one. Uno. Yes. Uno. Which is love... God! Love God! Yes, love God is our first value. Nice. Now, Nazi, tell us why we love God. We love God because God is love, and he first loved us. And I'm so glad that you remembered that. Look at you. Yeah, I yes. did my best. I like that one. Wonderful. All right, uh, our second value is loving pizzas. Love people! People? People. We love people? Pizza's not a people. Why do we love people, January? Okay, we love people because God loves all people. That's a really good reason. We should love all people then. We should. Yeah. Pizza's included? I love pizza too. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, but our third value is do your best. Do your best. Do your best. And say it with us on the count of three. One, two, three. Do, do your, your best. best. That's now, right. Now, what happens when we do our best, Najee? When we do our best? God does the rest. He does the rest. He does the yes. rest. Now, our fourth and final core value is... Have fun. Have fun. That's right. We have fun, and we want you to have fun. So the reason we have fun is because God, God gives, gives us joy. joy. So let's stand up on our feet and have some joy, and let's worship. All right, you guys. Let's stand up on our feet. Let's get ready to worship. Let's sing it out. The Chosen One. He's the chosen one, he's the champion, the winner for all time. With me to the end, Jesus is my friend, he's always by my side. Anything I face, he will be my strength.
games. Two songs. All right, let's get those kicks high. Great job, nice and high. Okay, all together, let's sing it out. Sing Savior. Big spin. Sing to the Lord. I've searched the world for a love that could fill my heart. Nothing compares to the wonder of who Holy, all the earth singing holy, all the angels cry. Job, everyone. Let's keep worshiping God. Give Him all that you have. He's the Lord. Sing out.
to sing out to him, sing worthy. your voice. worshiping everyone. All right, let's all bow our heads and close our eyes, and we're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus, that we get to join with the angels, with all the heavens, and sing, worthy are you. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. We love you, and we praise you today, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Great job, everybody. It's time for our scripture memory verse, so I need everyone to get up on your feet. Now the first time, I'll say it. The second time, you'll repeat it after me, and the third time, we'll all say it together. If you've got it, give me two thumbs up. All right, guys, now the first time, you'll just watch me. Love one another deeply. Honor others more than yourselves. Stay excited about your faith as you serve the Lord. Romans 12, 10 through 11. Now the second time, you'll repeat it after me. Love one another deeply. Honor others more than yourselves. Stay excited about your faith as you serve the Lord. Romans 12, 10 through 11. All right, everyone. Now this last time, we'll all say it together. Love one another deeply. Honor others more than yourselves. Stay excited about your faith as you serve the Lord. Romans 12, 10 through 11. Great job, everyone. Keep working on that verse, and we'll see you next time. That was such a great memory verse. Yeah, it was. Ah, I love a good memory verse, don't you? I do. Yeah, well, now it's time for our main point of the day. Main point. Point. 
which is God helps me do the right thing. Yeah, God helps me do the right thing. Not the wrong thing, he helps you do the right thing. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I've been stuck at home and it's really hard to do the right thing. Like there's it distractions, huh. like a video game and TV. Yeah. And then sometimes I just get so bored. I know, so me too. It gets really hard for me to do the right thing. I understand. But hey, today we're gonna learn about how God helps us to do the right thing. Cause sometimes it's hard, but God really loves us and he's gonna help us out. So let's kick to that video and check it out. Hey, what's up? My name is John and I'm so glad that you're here today. Today, we're gonna talk all about the importance of making right decisions. Depending on the size of the decision, sometimes it can be hard to choose to do the right thing. Maybe it's easier for you to make the right decision when it comes to getting out of your bed when mom says it's time to get ready for school or when your coach asks you and your teammates to stay a little bit after practice to help clean up. But what about when it comes to something you really care about? Maybe you've been saving up for a new bike and it seems to be taking forever to save enough money, but suddenly you're walking outside and you find a wallet on the sidewalk. You pick it up, you look inside, and you find more than enough money inside to buy your new bike. What do you do? Do you keep it or do you find the ID inside the wallet and take it back to its owner? Whether the hard decisions we have to make have to do with our school, our friends, our sports teams, at times, we all have hard decisions that we have to make. So what do we do? What do we do when we're faced with a hard decision and it seems like the easier choice to make would be to do the wrong thing? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to look into God's Word and see what He has to say on all of that. And that's why today's main point that we're going to be learning is God helps me do the right thing. Now, I have a friend who has hard choices to make. Let's check in with my friend January and see if we can help her with some of these decisions that she needs to make. Let's check it out. Hey there, my name is January and I've got a lot on my mind today. I have some really tough decisions to make. Now, usually I have no problem doing the right thing, like when my mom tells me to clean my room or like when I take out the trash. I mean, sure, I don't want to do those things, but it's not really that hard for me to choose to do it anyways. But today is different. So today I got a really bad grade on my math final. My mom, she even told me that I needed to study because this test would be way harder than any test I've taken before. But I guess I just didn't take it that serious. I mean, usually I can study for a few minutes and then just wing it on the test and be completely fine, but not this time. And now I'm just really nervous because I don't know what my parents are gonna think. Uh, I talked to my friend Kenny today and told him how I was feeling, and he said I should make up this whole story about what happened so I can convince my parents that I didn't do anything wrong. Now, I wasn't really sure what he meant by that, and when I asked, he explained to me that I could lie about it all and make up this big story and pretend like the truth never happened. But I don't really want to lie to my parents. I could tell my parents that the teacher and the grading were unfair, or I could tell them that I did my best even though I wasn't given a fair shot and this is just what happened. But that isn't really the truth either. I mean, how could I lie to my parents when I knew what the right thing to do was? What do you think? What should I do?
again. So I took all of your advice and I told the truth. And honestly, I was really afraid to talk to my parents. Now, I didn't want them to be disappointed in me or be let down. I don't usually get bad grades like these. When I built up the courage to tell them the truth, it was so different than what I expected. My parents, they weren't upset about my grade. They just told me how important it was to tell them the truth and that I shouldn't let my fear of disappointing them get in the way of my actual relationship with them. I made it out in my mind to be way worse than it actually was. Now, we talked about the story of David and King Saul together, and it helped me understand what my parents meant when they were talking to me. The story begins in the land of Israel as we look into the life of David. David was a shepherd boy, and although he was the youngest of four sons in his family, he was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel. But David had to wait a very long time until that promise would come true. And in the meantime, he was watching over his sheep and goats. He had to be patient because at that time there was another king on the throne of Israel. His name was Saul. Saul was strong and tall and looked like everything a king should be. But God doesn't look at our outward appearance. Instead, he focuses on our hearts. And ultimately, Saul was disobedient and did not follow God like he was supposed to. And for that reason, God chose to take the kingdom from his family and give it to David. After some time, David was sent to Saul to serve him. Saul loved him so much, and David was appointed his armor bearer. David became a great warrior, and after defeating Goliath the giant, Saul named him the commander of his armies, and David became successful in everything he did. Everyone in the kingdom loved David, but this started to make Saul jealous and angry at David because he was afraid of him and thought he would try to kill him and take the throne away from his family. So Saul wanted to kill David, but the Lord was with David and he kept him safe. David fled and escaped to multiple places after he was warned about King Saul's intentions. Saul kept trying to find ways to get rid of David and he hunted him, but Saul wasn't able to catch him. Day after day, Saul searched for him, but God did not give David into his hands. Moving from place to place, about 600 men started following David wherever he went. One day, Saul was told that David was in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul chose 3,000 elite soldiers, the best he could find in all Israel, and set out in search of David near the region of the wild goat rocks. During Saul's search for David, he went into the cave to take a break. Well, this very cave was the one where David and his men were hiding. And when David's men saw that Saul was unaware that David was there and unable to defend himself, they whispered, Now's your opportunity. Today the Lord is telling you, I will certainly put your enemy into your power to do with as you wish. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of Saul's robe. Immediately he felt guilty and David began to think that it was not right for him to harm Saul's life, even after all the trouble and all the hardship he has caused him. It was so easy for David to put an end to all of this, but he realized that no matter what Saul has done, it was still not right for him to hurt the one who God had chosen as king over Israel. So David ordered his men to step away, and he did not let them harm King Saul. Saul got up, left the cave, and went down to the road. David came out and shouted after Saul, My Lord, the King! When Saul looked behind him, he saw that David bowed down with his face to the ground. Why do you listen to the people who say I'm trying to harm you? This very day, you can see with your own eyes this isn't true. Some of my men told me to kill you, but I spared you. I cut off a piece of your robe, but I didn't kill you. This proves that I am not trying to harm you and that I have not sinned against you, even though you've been hunting for me to kill me. Then David went on to promise that he would never harm Saul. David said that God would be the one to protect David and to rescue him from Saul's power. Saul said, Is that really you, my son David? And he began to cry. And he said to David, You are a better man than I am, for you have repaid me good for evil. Yes, you have been amazingly kind to me. 
For when the Lord put me in a place where you could have killed me, you didn't do it. Who else would let his enemies get away when he had him in his power? May the Lord reward you for the kindness you have shown me today. And now I realize that you are surely going to be king and that the kingdom of Israel will flourish under your rule. Now swear to me by the Lord that when that happens, you will not kill my family. So David promised that he would not hurt Saul's family, and they left each other in peace. Now Saul continued to cause difficulty in David's life, but David kept his promise, and in time, David did become king of Israel. David was dearly loved by God, and Israel did flourish under his rule. Because David did everything that God wanted him to do, and he was a man after God's own heart. When David was given the chance to kill King Saul, the people who were around him, who were probably his good friends, they prompted him to do it anyway, even though they knew that the Lord told David not to kill King Saul. Not only is it important that we choose the right friends, but we must also do what is right in the sight of the Lord, even when it's difficult. Now God helped David do the right thing, and God helps me do the right thing. Thank you so much for learning with me today. I'll see you real soon. Today we talked about the importance of doing the right thing. And we also learned about the story of David and King Saul. David was faced with a lot of hard decisions in this Bible story. David had to make a choice between protecting himself and taking that into his own hands or trusting God to be his protector. In a moment of fear, David knew that if he honored God and did the right thing, the Lord would always protect him. Now my hope for you watching this is that you know that it's always worth it to do the right thing and that God will honor that obedience. You can trust Jesus to be your source of protection no matter what you're going through, even when you can't see the outcome because God is good and He loves you so much. So don't forget, the main point for today is God helps me do the right thing. We'll see you next time. Wow, that was such wow. a great video. Yeah, it was. Oh, it was awesome. I have full confidence in knowing that God is going to be with me and help me no matter what. Yeah, God helps us to do the right thing in any circumstance. As long as we let Him into our hearts, He can give us strength. It's amazing. It really is, Najee. Now, in a few seconds, there's going to be a prayer on the screen for you to ask Jesus into your heart and be your best friend. It was my very best decision that I've ever made, and oh. we want that for you too. Yeah, it's amazing. So when that prayer comes up, uh, we want you to pray that with anybody around you, your mom, your dad, your friends, whoever's around you, just get together, pray that prayer, and receive Jesus into your heart. We're so proud of you. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.